Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Seventy years ago this year, the Burngrange mining disaster happened in my constituency. It was and still stands as the worst accident in Scottish shale mining history. 53 men went down on shift on January 10, 1947, but only 38 came out alive. One miner's body was brought up with the survivors, but 14 men were trapped behind the debris and the fire. The heat and power of the fire was all-consuming. Hopes of any survivors faded fast as the hours passed. 15 men from my constituency died in this tragic accident. Mr Deputy Speaker, earlier this year, the towns of West Calder and Seafield paid homage to their lost miners in moving tributes. Their names were read aloud and stories told of the events by local school children who had spent time in class learning about what those men and their families had endured. Standing in West Calder Square on that chilly January day earlier in the year when tributes were paid, hearing the children of Parkhead Primary recounting the stories of the men uh, of Burn Grange was such a powerful and beautiful tribute. And I would also like to pay tribute to Alan Tufts and his team from the local area who worked so hard to put together uh, tributes and bring the community get together in commemoration. Mr Deputy Speaker, I am also proud to have the opportunity to read the names of those men again today. The men who lost their lives working for their families and their communities in an industry that is marked now by the Bings of West Lothian that surround my constituency. John McGarty, 30, Linefield Avenue, West Calder, single. John Lightbody, 39, Glogue Place, West Calder, married, two of a family. Anthony Gogan, 44, Parkhead Crescent, West Calder, married, two of a family. David Muir, 32, Parkhead Crescent, West Calder, single. George Easton, 48, Northfield Cottages, West Calder, married, three of a family. Henry Cowie, 28, Parkhead, Parkhead Crescent, West Calder, single. William Ritchie, 50, Cowsland Terrace, Seafield, married, three of a family. John Fairley, 21, Old, <coughs> Old Rose, Seafield, single. Thomas Heggie, 27, Cowsland Crescent, Seafield, eh, <coughs> two of a family. William Finlay, 56, Paul Beth, married, three of a family. family. Samuel Pake, 24, New Breach, married, one of a family. William Carroll, 31, Seafield, married, two of a family. David Carroll, 37, Old Rose, Seafield, married, five of a family. I cannot imagine how the local mining community felt when the pit sirens wailed to warn of disaster. The families running to the pit to wait for news, a wait that lasted for days. Before the families could claim the bodies of their fathers, husbands, brothers and sons. Today I pay tribute to them and their sacrifice. And my own grandfather went down the pit as a coal miner just a few miles along the road as a fitter in Eastern Colliery Bathgate. He and his father and two brothers all had serious accidents during their time as miners. Accidents, he told me, growing up were just part of the job. And I grew up with stories of him hauling himself through tiny crev crevices. At five foot five, he was a wee manny and got sent down all the nooks and crannies that the bigger men couldn't fit into. There was one accident he often told me of. When the tow rope broke and loaded with a loaded tub full of coal was sent careering down the shaft, knocking him unconscious, leaving a serious gash in the back of his head. The truth was, Mr Deputy Speaker, he should never have been where he was, but it was a path well trodden by the miners around him. He survived fine, but he never went that same route again. The scar on his head was an indelible mark shown many times to me as a child and was a reminder to him, he said, that he was one of the lucky ones. Would the Honourable Lady give way? I'd be delighted to give way. Sure. First of all, I congratulate the Honourable Lady on bringing this forward as well. It's, it's a, a, a need for the safety. D does the Honourable Lady agree that it's essential that government works with the representatives of the Mining Industry Safety Leadership Group to provide a forum to, first of all, develop, lead and implement a strategy for health and safety in the mining industry, that working with these groups is the best way to promote health and safety in mines throughout the whole of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. I completely agree with the honourable gentleman, and that work uh, with uh, members who work in that community is so vital. And West Lothian Council's local history library has collected information about the disaster, which became part of a community exhibition developed in conjunction with the Calder History Group and Ammon Valley Heritage Trust. Many communities across uh, the UK 
do work like this, and it is so vitally important that the young people and communities around us remember their industrial heritage. I'd be delighted to thank my honourable friend for giving way, and I'd like to congratulate my honourable friend for securing this adjournment debate. May I just take this opportunity to remember the 207 people who lost their lives at the High Blantyre Colliery in what is now my constituency on the 22nd of October 1877. Many local women were suddenly widowed and children left without a father in what was the worst mining disaster in the history of Scotland. Would my honourable friend agree with me that, though historic, this tragedy provides a lesson from the past and why health and safety of those working in mines should be paramount? I thank my honourable friend for that intervention and join her in paying tributes. She is a, a doughty champion for her uh, constituents and, and share in all that she says. I'd be delighted to give way. Uh, thank my honourable friend for giving way, and of course I congratulate her for bringing this debate forward. Thank you have a keynote, and that we, we must never forget sacrifices that people made. It is very important that children and people living within the communities in, in these later years understand what happened before them. In my constituency, we are coming up this year as the 60th anniversary of the Cames Colliery disaster, where 17 men lost their lives in an underground explosion. So I just want to pay tribute to these guys and these, th their families. And as I say, it's very important communities never forget. Yeah. Yeah. I thank my honourable friend for that intervention. And join him in paying tribute to those lost in his constituency. Because I welcome such fitting tributes to men and their families left behind. And it will remain a sober reminder to all of us for generations to come of the sacrifices those men made on that day in January 70 years ago. The five Shieldbings, or the five sisters as they are famously known locally in my constituency, and the Bings of Broxburn eh, were recently serialised by BBC Scotland are they, and are the indelible marks eh, on the Wesleyan landscape that remind us of an industrial past. Constituencies across the UK that are reminders in museums and galleries like Mill Farm in my West Lothian constituency and the Lady Victor Victoria Colliery in Newton Grange, which I remember visiting uh, as a youngster when my grandfather was terminally ill uh, with a tumour. I remember going home to ask my mum whether she thought he would be well enough to visit. He wasn't, but the stories that I brought home meant such a great deal to him. Mr Deputy Speaker, there have been thousands of deaths in mines over the centuries, but fortunately safety has improved, and it's been 50 years since the last mining accident in the UK happened at the Cambrian Colliery in South Wales on May 17, 1965, where 31 tragically lost their lives. But as recently as May 2014, the worst mining accident in the 21st century killed 301 people in Soma, Turkey. Four years before, I'm sure many of us remember the 29 men who were killed underground at the Pike River mine disaster in New Zealand. And in November 2010, just seven months before, 29 out of 31 miners on site at the Upper Big Branch Mine in West Virginia, USA, were killed in an explosion. And on January 30, 2000, the Bea Mare cyanide spill took place in Romania. 100,000 tonnes of cyanide contaminated water broke into the river Somme, Tisa and Danube. Although no human fatalities were reported, the leak killed up to 80% of aquatic life eh, and of some of the affected rivers, which saw the accident hailed as the worst environmental disaster in Europe since Chernobyl. In our UK mining industry, although it has been tainted by eh, issues across eh, the country with health and safety, we have learned a huge amount from accidents such as the one in Burn Grange in my constituency to the pit closures and attacks on trade unions in the Thatcher era and the year-long miners' strike. It was strikes in Lanarkshire that eventually drove my grandmother's family to Glasgow so her parents could seek other work. We remember them today and always. And as a direct result of that strike, mining is no longer as much part of the industrial landscape. But health and safety is crucial for those left working in the industry, wherever they are in the world. And I do believe that we have come a long way in health and safety improvements, but much more still needs to be done, not just in mining, but across other dangerous industries, such as the oil and gas industry. Because, Mr Deputy Speaker, many went from our pits into other industrial work, like oil and gas. And it's so important to remember that men and women in these industries have, and still do, work in some of the most challenging environments in the world. Health and safety is paramount. In fact, one such worker who followed that path was Mike McTie, the father of my office manager, Stephanie. He worked in the Bilston Glen pit in Edinburgh for many years and was the last of a famous breed of coal miners in Scotland who moved on to work in oil and gas. 
and he only retired a few months ago. He told me recently how he was once caught